In this lesson, I'd like to discuss alternating the ride symbol pattern. I find that a lot of students are alternating it incorrectly. They're playing it too active and too busy. Sort of sounds like this. I've never seen a professional drummer use that in a contemporary jazz setting. So I've developed a conceptual method that I'd like to share with you. First of all, I would like to delete some of the ride cymbal notes from a traditional ride cymbal pattern. It leaves me with more quarter notes in the ride cymbal and it allows the ride cymbal pattern to breathe. One, two, three. Now that's very deceptive because it sounds like I'm doing some stuff with my ride cymbal, but in all reality I'm doing less stuff because I'm taking away a note. I'm taking away one of the upbeats on the end of two or one of the upbeats on the end of four and that leaves me with the quarter note and more space. I really like this way to begin the alternating of the ride cymbal pattern. The second step to this approach is to tie one or both of the upbeats of the ride cymbal pattern, the and of two or the and of four. And what this does is elongate the pattern, it alternates the pattern, and it makes it sound more forward and open. One, two, one, two, three. These two patterns, these two approaches, were employed by drummers such as Tony Williams and Elvin Jones, Roy Haynes, and certainly Jack Dejeanette. Young drummers on the scene today who are currently riding like this would be Brian Blade, Bill Stewart, and Jeff Watts. This is an approach that the rest of the band feels comfortable with because you hear and feel ride cymbal pattern, ride cymbal beat but it's not the standard ding ding a ding repetitive static voice normally associated with jazz ride cymbal. The third approach to this style is one where I combine the quarter notes on the ride and the tied notes. One, two, one, two, three, four. 